Hi and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to show you how to slipstream Windows XP with service packs and burn it onto a CD so you can install Windows XP with the latest service pack right away. First let me explain what a ser uh, I'm sorry what slipstreaming is. You're simply taking an update package, a service pack and integrating it onto your Windows installation. Of course you will need a few things for this. You will need an original Windows XP disk, home edition or professional, that doesn't matter, either is fine. You will need, of course, the original serial number when you install it later on. And you will need a recordable CD. So you'll need a CDR you can write on and you'll need a CD burner in your computer. So let's just get this thing started. We'll need some software to do this, or else this will be seriously hard. So open up the internet and find the application Enlight. The easiest way to do this is to use Google. So I'll just search Enlight. And here the application website is. On to the left, click download. And here will just pick a download mirror for the version 1491, since this is the latest. Just pick a mirror and run the file. This will download the application to my computer, so I can start installing it. This will just take a few seconds. There, run the file. And approve, if you're running, running Windows Vista or Windows 7, as I am here, you'll need to approve these Windows user account control things. We'll just pick English as our installation language, click next accept the agreement and of course the good user reads this through. We'll just pick the installation location and a full installation that's fine. We'll have a desktop icon and this will install. And we'll just click finish. The next thing we'll need to get started right away because this will take some time and uh, I only have 10 minutes for this video. We'll start the application in line and we can pick a language for it. So if you really not are into this English and want to do a lot of advanced things with this, you might even pick your own language here. But English is fine for this demonstration. Now we need to locate our Windows installation. We need to tell it where the heck is our Windows disk. And it is in the CD-ROM drive. I already loaded mine in. And it tells me it needed on the hard drive for this to continue. So I'll just need to throw this on a folder on my computer. I created a project folder on my system drive on the root of my C drive. And I just made a folder here called disk where I can save the disk contents. Now we'll start copying all the files from the CD onto my hard drive. This will take about 15 minutes and while it uh, is ongoing we can download the service pack we need. So if you go on to Google again and type Windows XP Service Pack 3 Download Notice Google will suggest it for me. The first result will be the best. In my case here it is. Look for this. Download details. Windows XP Service Pack 3 Network Installation. This will open the page with the downloads page for this service pack. It is 300 megabytes large this so it's pretty large. Now my Windows XP disk is Danish so I'll just need to download the Danish service pack for this to work. So just pick the language, click change, and then click download. This will start the download, and I'll just save it. And I am saving this to my service pack folder here on my C drive. And my project folder service pack. And I'll just save it here. So while these are downloading, I'll just pause this video and I will return when they are done downloading and copying. So, now the copying and the downloading is finished. And as you can see here in the Enlight window, it already found out that it is my Windows XP Home Edition, the disk is Danish, and it has Service Pack 1. It also tells me where my path to my disk is on the hard drive, and how much space it's using. So, let's click Next. This next one is interesting. 
Uh, this is presets. If you have used Enlight before and you made a set of settings and, and saved them when you're done, you can import these settings and do the same to this disk. Uh, since we don't have uh, any presets this time, we'll just click Next. Now you can choose what you want to do with this disk. You have a loads of options here, but be careful, some of these might ruin the disk. Um, this one with the drivers and these tweaks and options, they can be dangerous and be careful what you do in these parts. So, but for today I'm just going to create a service pack and a bootable ESO. This first part here is the integration of hotfixes. So the, these two on the top um, and the lowest one here, that's probably going to be the ones you use the most. Uh, if you want to uh, pre-install uh, pre some updates for Windows XP, you can download these updates and just integrate them as well as all the updates you find through Windows Update also will be on Microsoft's website. You just have to find these SP numbers. That difficult. Trust me on that one. So we'll just use this bootable ESO and service pack. Click next and it'll ask me where I have the service pack. I'll just click here select and um, as you might can guess now I, I have made a tribe with this videos a few times and something always went wrong. Um, but I saved this on my system drive, my Windows XP slipstream, and then my service pack folder. And here is the service pack. Now the slipstreaming process will begin. And it is in two stages. First it will extract the service pack file. And then it will integrate it onto the disk. And the, when it integrates it, it actually just updates all the files in the Windows installation. Um, if you want to do this for either Windows Vista or Windows 7, there is a program called VLight from the same publisher as Enlight, and you can just use that, that application to slipstream service packs and create bootable ESOs for Windows 7 and Windows Vista, of course. Um, this bootable ESO, I can just quickly explain. Um, an ESO file is an exact image of a CD saved in one file on the computer containing boot sectors, all the files, everything. Um, and, and that's a very good reason to, to save this file. So if you lose the disk or anything, you need to burn a new one, you can just always do it. You don't have to slipstream this once more. So save the ESO file, that's very important. And of course you can also, if you just want to do this one time, you can just directly burn this onto a disk. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to create an ESO file. So, now the integration uh, of Service Pack 3 has been completed, and I'll just click OK. And then I'll click Next. Now I'm presented with the bootable ESO screen. I can choose just to create an image, burn an image, or just directly burn it. If you burn an image, you'll first create the image, and then it will be burned. But I'll just create image here for this purpose. Uh, as I said to you, you would just get a, a writable CDR. Uh, you can just choose direct burn up burn image. Then you can label the disk, and I can just call this Windows. Uh, sorry, WinXP Home. And I really don't need to do anything else. I'll just click here, make ESO, and I choose when to save it. And I'll just save it here. Oh, SP3 Slipstream, save. And now it's just creating this ESO file for me. So now I can burn the ESO file or I can use it in a virtual computer or pretty much whatever I want to do with it. And that's how you do a slipstream of a service pack onto your Windows installation. Thank you for watching and of course if you have any issues just write to me and I'll try to answer your questions. If you would like me to make a demonstration of this to Windows Vista and Windows 7 too, I will happily do so. Thank you for watching.